Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another low-cost gaming item comparatively. Uh, this is the Logitech G213 Prodigy keyboard. This is not a mechanical keyboard. It's using membranes like uh, some lower-cost keyboards might have, but it does have some backlighting that's configurable as well as a lot of macro functionality too. And we'll take a look at what you can do with this keyboard in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Logitech. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a look at the hardware now. One of the things that surprised me about this is that it really does have a mechanical feel to it. You can hear how loud the keys are. Uh, they have decent travel on them as well. And uh, there's a very good replication of a mechanical experience here in a low cost keyboard. Now, if you are an aficionado of mechanical keyboards, this will not fool you, but I think for those uh, looking for that experience for less money, this is definitely something to consider because I really am quite pleased with the typing comfort on this one. I've been typing on it for the last couple of days. Uh, very pleased with that. The backlighting is a little dim on it. Now, we're under my studio lights now, which will make it worse than uh, it would be otherwise in the real world, but I think it'll look fine in a darker room, but if you have a moderately lit room, it may not look as nice. It is rather large in its uh, overall size here, because the wrist rest does not come off. It is permanently attached here, as you can see on the bottom, so uh, you will be lugging around a larger uh, keyboard to your LAN party. Uh, there's also some uh, little uh, stands here in the back for giving you a better typing angle. I do like the comfort, though. It is nice to have a wrist rest on a keyboard like this so your wrist can get a little straighter uh, as you're typing on there. Uh, we'll get into all the software configuration in just a minute, but you can control the lighting here just by uh, hitting that switch. There's a game mode function here, so you can configure certain keys not to work uh, when you're in a game. So for example, if I don't want the Windows key to work, I can hit the game mode and I can configure those keys accordingly. Uh, and you have some multimedia keys on here. One thing that's missing though are macro keys. So you have to uh, map your macros to function keys as you'll see when we go into the software. There are keyboards out there like the Corsair K40 that are in this price range. Also membrane keyboards that have uh, macro keys on the side. So that might be something to consider if you want a dedicated macro row. Otherwise you will have to swap out whatever function key function you want to use uh, for the macro that you're configuring. All right, so let's take a look at the configuration software. This is the same software that powers their gaming mice and other gaming products. So you can do everything from uh, one control panel, essentially. So this is the home screen here, and you can get into the uh, macro configuration by clicking on one of these keys here. Now remember, you can only configure your macros on this macro row here, nowhere else. So you can't configure the controls of individual keys like you might on other keyboards. If I click on that key here, you can see we're brought into the uh, configuration screen here. So for example, if I wanted to uh, add a new command, I can uh, go through a whole bunch of different options here. One of the things I like to show is uh, how to do a text block here. So I'm just going to uh, call this Lon. I'm going to have it spell out my complete name uh, and hit enter, and I'm going to hit OK. And now what I can do is assign that to one of these function key positions here. So I put that in there, and if I could type on the uh, notepad real quick, and if I go and hit the F1 key now, what'll happen is it'll just type out my name uh, completely just by hitting that key. So those are some of the things you can do on there. So if you have games or something that uh, have uh, multiple key presses that you're trying to execute at one time, uh, you can load them into one of your macro keys, hit the key once, and it'll execute all those commands for you automatically. So that's some of the power of these macros. And again, my only disappointment is that you don't have the ability to have separate keys for that because you do have to give up, in this case, our F1 key in order to get that to work. You can also set multiple profiles too. So if you have uh, a game that uh, has very specific macros, you can map it to one of these profiles Files, set that profile up and then switch back and forth between them uh, so you don't have to reconfigure the, the, uh, the keyboard every time. It also has the ability to scan games that are on your computer and already installed and uh, have certain commands already executed for you. So for example, if I uh, turn on the No Man's Sky option here, I can map the boost uh, to F1, for example, if I wanted to do something like that. So they have some of the uh, key commands of your favorite games already pre-configured and as software gets updated, uh, you can add more to it. Now because this is a budget keyboard, you don't have the same lighting options that you would normally have on a more expensive keyboard. So what they've done here uh, is given you the ability to have uh, five different color zones uh, for the keyboard. So you can't configure a key individually, but uh, a group of keys can be. So for example, uh, F1 through F3 and all the keys below it 
uh, can be a color here. So I could click on this and maybe make it uh, red here and uh, that section of the keyboard will light up red. It's hard to see on camera here, but I'll uh, overlay some B-roll footage so you can see exactly what these keys look like when you have different zones configured. I can maybe make this middle one green and so on and so forth. So you can do that. Uh, you also have the ability to have uh, just a entire effect be brought onto the keyboard here. So you can have a color shifting effect with a cycling going on, a breathing going on, uh, lots of the same kinds of lighting options that you have on other keyboards. So that is the Logitech G213 Prodigy, a decent gaming keyboard for the money. I do like uh, how mechanical it feels, even though it isn't mechanical. One thing I would have liked to have seen would be a row of macro keys on the side so I don't have to give up function keys for uh, the macro functionality, which is actually pretty powerful uh, in their software. That would have been a nice feature to add on there. If you do want those separate macro keys, that Corsair K40 has it. However, the Corsair keyboard only allows a single color to be configured for the entire backlighting system. Uh, this one does give you the ability to set the backlight color in quadrants. So it does do a little more on the backlighting, is a little bit more comfortable to type on, but if macro capability is more important, then the Corsair might be worth looking at because of those additional keys. This is Lon Seibin. And thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.